My name is Peril Nube. I'm aged 25. I grew up in Bulawayo, staying with my mom and my dad. Um, uh, when my dad was alive, he was the breadwinner. I lost him when I was in grade four. Um, and that is when life changed for, for me. What happened is um, on school holiday, I was just told to go visit a family. Um, relatives at Makandeni and I went thinking it's just one of those holidays like the usual holidays but actually my father was was sick and nobody wanted me to see him or to even talk to him so I was just sent away for the holidays and uh, uh, then when I came back uh, he was already late he had died and no, none of my family members really cared to come to me and ask um, how I felt about it and even the way that he was presented to me. Uh, one, one day, I remember one day when I was at school, uh, when he had died, they sent someone to just come get me. And the next thing we went to our raw home in Mapisa and I just saw this large gathering of people and I just realized that the only person who was missing there was my father. The, every other relative was there, aunties, aunts, and grandparents, cousins. Everyone was there, but my father was not there. I could see it, but I really couldn't comprehend what was happening. And then um, uh, I was called for the um, body viewing. Yeah. So they just called me. They didn't even explain what was happening. And, there was before a dead body and I just saw my father there and then I remember one of my grandfathers told me um, you see your father is dead you will never see him again and I just cried uh, the entire time I think I cried once during the, the funeral and I think I cried more because of the trauma like I tried I cried because I had seen a dead person not because I had lost a father uh, the, the loss really hits me Afterwards, when life had changed for us, when uh, we moved from uh, affording and making it in life to to nothing, and uh, there would be, I remember my mom now gave up her life, was now going to to Botswana to try to make things work for us, but then um, it wasn't the same again. I had lost my father, and I felt like I am losing my mom. What I didn't understand is how someone can be here today and not there tomorrow so that is what I've, um, I've been carrying with me that hurt me i never received any counseling i never received any love from anybody and uh after that uh, my, my father had been a hard person on people so i felt like every other person i wanted to take revenge and they were taking it out on me people would say had full staff um, and I, now i remember like clothes seized and now I had to just get these handouts from people and you know people just gave me what they didn't want anymore and uh, I couldn't say no my mom couldn't say no because we didn't need it I had this um, purple jacket I remember yeah it was a small fit um, I used to wait in the morning I would wait during the day at night when I slept I would wear it and it had this smell and Somehow I just, the smell just reminded me of how, how poor we are with my mom. And so that hurt me. I, I was privileged, however, to go to a boarding school to form one, to form six, six. I liked it there because I really, I really didn't have to face my reality at home. Things weren't easy and it got bad 2008 when my mom lost her passport and the economy happened and now she couldn't, um, do the things that she, she should do when she was a cross border so um it was just school fees and no groceries at school visiting day sometimes children show up and you'd see this uh, other children there with their families and they are happy and they're sharing stories you can see that there is love here they, these people are bonding and you are just there and just watching and now you're thinking okay what will happen to my own father and um, for a long time i hated people I hated people in my family. I hated everyone. I blamed everyone for the death of my father. Um, even though when I, when I grew up, I just learned that it was the heart disease, heart problem. But uh, to me, it was people because I felt like even if he was sick, I still had the right to talk to him. 
Oh, I think it's a yeah, bye, or something like that. But that wasn't afforded to me. So I know I've carried this head within me. It got bad when I turned 18, and now you see like men people come they know your story and they act as if they want to help you and you don't see help coming your way actually people want to capitalize on you because you know they don't have that that protection um my mom i, I think my mom did all, everything that she could do like maybe within her capacity but um i wasn't that protected so that, that is how these people get to me but then <clears throat> somehow, somehow, I ended up. Um, I remember there's one officer in particular in Tlatlandila. I was supposed to be filling out uh, forms for my university school fees payment, so I couldn't go to school. I wouldn't go to part one if he hadn't signed. And then for some reason, he said, I will only sign if you sleep with me. So I just took the papers, went back home, gave them to my mother, and just told her that I found the offices closed. I didn't know how to communicate what was happening, and it was just one. Thing after the other and she was just there dying within so i um orphans i would say people we carry painful um experiences we carry within us things that we can explain we don't know who to talk to and um sometimes the people that really get to us or the people that end up getting to the children all in the name of helping them are people that um that they don't that don't that don't have the fear of the lord that don't have the love of God, um, maybe within them. That, that that don't care about the person next to them. They just want to capitalize on on them. So to me, often son is about Christians, like maybe raising an awareness uh, within the communities that you know they they there they are problems. We lose we lose beloved, we lose loved ones because of um, different uh, reasons. But whatever would have happened to a child, it doesn't mean that it has to be the end. Of it all and I know economy wise um, you lose someone you lose your parents and then it becomes even hard for the extended family to chip in and to help you out or something like that but I feel like Christians if we can help we, we, we should where we when where we can help we, we should help uh, the, the lost the loss of a loved one is something that uh, none of us maybe will ever master how to to deal with how how to cope with it is something that is going to continue to hurt a lot of us but i just want to say that the the children they don't have to be on their own they don't have to be without anybody we we are the ones that are christians i feel like we are the ones that are obligated to to show the love to them we can reach out to them in in different ways uh we can foster them if we can take a child who's been orphaned and there's no one in you incorporate them into your own family it would be an amazing thing because we know for sure the life of the child will never be the same again if you can adopt that is the better uh we know the institutions and they are helping out but i feel like we are more um our lives um are better molded in a family where there is a father where there's a mother where we have people that can socialize us into 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 the good people that everyone what would like the child to turn out to be so i would like to encourage us um uh, it shouldn't be the end of the of the road for the child the fact that they have lost somebody is not even their fault the, the fact that they have been damned is not even their fault um whatever happened whatever the circumstances are, uh, are around that uh it's, it's not the fault of the child at the end of the day so if we can reach out as as christians if we can if, if we can't really take in the children i believe there are some other people that have the time maybe to 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 to, to, to take care of these children but if they don't have the resources so whatever you have you can just actually come up and partner with people that um, are reaching out to the children yeah uh, and the word says uh, God has got plans for all of us and I believe uh, one of those things the plans is for the good for the of these children and so we can actually reach out to them it doesn't matter the age it doesn't matter uh, what kind of us it could be financial it could be actually taking them in to your home it could be just visiting them to show love it could be just sharing the word of god with them it could just be anything they often they carry within themselves very hateful stories and they just need somebody to hear them out you can be that person who can be there for the child to actually hear them out you can be that person who can be there and be the encouraging um 
force in, in, in the child's life. It can be that person that the child looks at and says, you know what, I know if this person shows up, I, I feel self um again it doesn't have to be money you, you, you just have you can just be available for the child that goes a long way i think um but i thank you